the Chinese are quite particular about dining. Thanks to their love of food, there is an astounding variety of Chinese cuisine, coupled with unique anecdotes and etiquette. And thus, a great nation of gourmet has come into being. Delicacies are everywhere around us, not just in gourmet restaurants, but in our daily lives as well. It's actually quite easy to cook this dish. First, put all the shredded ingredients, such as winter bamboo shoots, long thread moss, green vegetables and ham into a pot of chicken soup. Then boil before adding the tofu. Wait until the tofu shreds rise to the surface. This dish is judged on how well the tofu's been cut. This is a professional chef's knife. Unlike in the West, Chinese chefs normally just use one knife. The way the knife is used can show its owner's cooking skills. In Chinese cooking, the way a knife's used can affect the taste and character of a dish. There are four main ways of cutting, namely vertical, horizontal, slanted, and carving. Culinary knife skills are an essential part of Chinese cuisine. So, what's the secret? Yanjiang is a coastal city in southwest Guangdong. It's home to the Yanjiang Shebazhe Group, famous for their knives. General manager Li Zihui was born into a family of knife makers. He has high standards for his cooking knives. Every Tens of thousands of regular knives are manufactured here using modern technology. But cooking knives are made in a traditional way. The first step is to forge the knife blank. Cut. 
，那边需要人工来敲它，千锤百炼。A small billet is hammered repeatedly until it takes the shape of a normal kitchen knife. As it gets thinner from the spine to the edge, two lines gradually appear. Only the most skilled craftsmen can make these lines symmetrical and even. If you need a building, you can satisfy this needs. You can cut, you can cut, and you can cut, and you can cut, and you can cut, and you can cut. In the process, the knife metal must be frequently dipped into water to increase its strength. The heating process must be controlled manually. Good quality knives can only be forged when the heating process is carefully controlled. This is the traditional edging process. Only very experienced and skilled knife makers can do this properly. Next comes the polishing process, and then applying a handle. It's this detailed craftsmanship, reliant on a 1,000-year-old tradition, that enables Chinese master chefs to cook so wonderfully using just one knife. Young Zhou, once called Huiyang in ancient times, is located south of the Yangtze and Hui rivers. Since the Sui and Tang dynasties, this place has been famous for its culture, especially during the Qing dynasty. The literati appreciate poetry and food. And they've influenced dishes with well-chosen ingredients and fine cooking. And this is one way cooks developed their knife skills. Seventy-one-year-old Zhu Chang Long is a top Huayang cuisine chef. His dishes are as fine as antique porcelain. Today, he will show us the two famous dishes. Large meatballs of pork with crab meat and fish balls. Both demand the knife skills of a master chef. Meatballs are made with a ratio of three parts fatty pork to seven parts lean pork. The other ingredients are crab meat, eggs, green vegetables, ginger, shrimp, and Chinese scallion. Once prepared, the balls are called lion heads because that's what they look like. Many believe the meat is minced, but that's not the case. It's the product of great knife skills. Horizontal cutting means the blade is parallel to the chopping board. Vertical cutting is used while dicing what's already been shredded. The cook has to be very careful, cutting the tiny pieces into uniform cubes. Add some Shaoxing wine, shrimp and ginger to be mixed with the crab meat, then make them into balls. Stew the meatballs in a pot of water. The lean meat gradually shrinks and is moistened by the melting fat. The diced pieces 
Also prevent the balls from over shrinking, ensuring a dish that is tender, fresh and juicy. Two hours of skewing and it's ready to serve. It's the knife skills that make the dish both beautiful and tasty. The second dish might look similar, but fish balls cook differently. Three styles of cutting are needed. First, horizontally cut the fish in half. Then chop the fish using the spine of the knife. This is a kind of vertical cutting method. This method of chopping softens the fish, giving it a fluffy appearance. Then add some Chinese scallion, ginger and cooking wine with eggs. Stir before forming it into balls, then put them in a pot half filled with cold water. That's why this dish is also called floating fish balls. When the water boils, the balls are ready. They taste tender, soft and smooth. On August the 28th, 2011, an annual festival is held by Tai Lake to celebrate the start of a new fishing season. People have fished here since ancient times. Over time, Suzhou cuisine developed from Huiyang cuisine, characterized by gourmet lake cuisine. Bi Jiang Ming, a top Chinese chef, used to be the private chef for Lu Wenfu, the late gourmet chef and writer. Bi is a specialist in cooking squirrel shaped mandarin fish, a traditional Suzhou food. This course alone allegedly makes over 2 million RMB in revenue for the Shijia restaurant annually. While many recognize this dish, how many really know how it's made? During Emperor Qianlong's reign, a salter of Yangzhou compiled the famous cookbook about Huiyang cuisine. Squirrel-shaped mandarin fish is included in it. The original recipe is simple. Over time, this dish has become renowned for its demanding knife skills. Forward slicing, combining with vertical cutting, can make a beautiful design out of the fish meat. Each cut must be exact to keep the fish meat connected with the skin and to allow it to cook evenly. Now that the fish has its shape, it's time to coat it with a starchy flour and to lightly fry it. 
，炸了以后啊，一定要圆，开出来的像像那个圆一滑了。那么这就跟宋楚瑜身体是成一样的。It takes two steps to finish the frying process. First, a high temperature to shape the fish. Then take the pan off the heat to cool it down, with the fish still gently frying. When ready, take the fish out and put the pot back to reheat the oil. Then put the fish back in to bring to a crispy perfection. When the surface gets crispy. Remove the fish and add some ready-made sweet and sour sauce. I'm a European college in the local language. I want to say, "Zi zi xiang, zi zi xiang, jing zi zi." Sizzling sounds like a squirrel squeaking, ending the cooking process. Then you are presented with a squirrel fish with a layered taste. Made possible only through master knife skills. It's a tough course. The seemingly simple action of cutting is actually quite difficult. It depends on the texture, size, and quality of the raw ingredients. Students have to use many knives before they can be equipped with their own. Even so, Chinese chefs spare no effort in practicing their knife skills. Many for over a decade. In fact, some master chefs have been documented as early as 2,000 years ago. There is a classic Chinese story of a chef named Ding. After slaughtering 1,000 cattle over a period of 19 years, his knife still looked brand new. Whatever part of the animal he was working on, at his shoulders' height, under his feet, or parallel to his knees. His peeling of meat from the bones of the cattle was almost like classical music. Through a few select moves, the cattle were stripped to bare bone, with all the meat falling off. Ding was simply a magician with a knife. Nowadays, with modern technology, this ancient slaughtering technique is history. However, modern practitioners equipped with Ding's skills still exist. Zhang Hao, the head chef of Lu's old mansion restaurant, demonstrates the famous dish, three nested duck. A shell drake, a wild duck, and a pigeon are all that's needed. The goal is to stuff the pigeon into the wild duck. And then into the shell drake, hence the name three nested duck. Each one has to be boneless yet intact. The first step is to debone the duck. Its blade is mainly from the edge of the head to about three to five millimeters. The blade is held on the blade. The blade is mainly from the edge of the head to about three to five millimeters. 
This is a chance for a chef to show off his perfected knife skills. Deboning is a meticulous process, requiring a chef to be quick, methodical, and careful. You need to use various techniques to... delicacies be made. The use of chili pepper is getting more and more popular in Chinese restaurants. What's interesting is that chili peppers were brought to China only 400 years ago. Why is this exotic ingredient so popular? How good is it for us? Where will it lead us? Please join us for part three of Discovering Chinese Cuisine.